Dude, this sucks. I'm not an expert at making music. I have no professional experience. I don't own a keyboard and only use free online instruments. I don't even really know music theory. I just click around until I think something sounds fine. That being said, it has always been my dream to make music for a game, and today my dream was realized. My friends Habu and Tyler coded a mod for a farming game called Stardew Valley that adds eight bosses to the game, and none of them have their own theme music. So I reached out to them and I was like, uh, can I make songs for the bosses? And they said no. I'm kidding, they let me do it. So today we'll be making a battle theme for this fella. His name is Kavrag, and he leveled me once. If you enjoy this type of stuff, please do let me know in the comments so I know to do more of it soon. Again, I'm really no expert with this, so I know that none of what I'm doing is revolutionary or like efficient at all. I'm just really excited about this and wanna share it with you guys. All right, without further ado, here's how I made Hold Your Ground, Kavrag's theme. Alright, so I'm here in the project file. It's very messy because I, I, again, as I said in the intro, I don't have any professional experience with making music. I've only done it as a hobby. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of freaking like music students in the, in the comments being like, his like workflow physically hurts me. I'm trying my best. Okay, so let's just start from the beginning. I, when I thought of like, okay, I'm, I'm making it for a dragon boss, right? This is a dragon. Immediately, I kind of had a chord progression come to mind, but the first thing I wanted to do is just decide what key I wanted to be in, and I picked A. So I decided to just start with like a kind of video gamey sounding bass, just playing A over and over again. So that's gonna be like my bass line. Pretty easy so far. I don't want the song to start with this. I don't want you to like hit play and it's like -na -na -na. like I, I want to I want to ease you into it a little bit. So I added EQ equalizer to cut out all these high frequencies and make it sound like this. So that takes it from to you see how there's a huge difference there? But I don't want it to stay like limp and sad for the whole way through. So I added this like little automation curve to make it be like, oh, it's super, it's super muffled. Oh, oh, less muffled, less muffled, less muffled, less muffled. Punch you in the face. Like that. Um, And then just to really like sell this beginning part, I added this little crash here. And basically what the crash is, is it's just a symbol. It's just that, but with some reverb. And then the most crucial part of this entire project, which is this free, everything I'm doing is free, by the way. This plugin called Crush that I downloaded for free. It's a bit crushing plugin. And what bit crushing does is it intentionally lowers the quality of your sounds and gives them that really video gamey feel. So it goes from this to this. See how that sounds like way more kind of like 8-bit raw dragon. Now, I kind of had a crisis at the beginning of this of whether or not I wanted to try and make it sound like, like fit in with Stardew Valley's music because what I made doesn't really sound like it would be from the Stardew Valley soundtrack. And that's because the Stardew Valley soundtrack mainly uses like real sounding instruments and mine are a lot more techy and 8-bitty. But unfortunately, the reason for that is that I only use free things when I make music. I don't have any paid plugins can't really afford them and it's way easier to make free music sound good when you're intentionally making the sound quality low if you're doing 8-bit than if you're trying to use real instruments because it is so easy to hear like a trumpet plug-in and be like oh that's so fake so i'm i'm sticking with this for now so yeah now we got this so you have that little entrance and then and then there and then i added one more little crash down here so it goes buh and then the, and then the bass comes in New section right there. Let's move on to the drums. Whenever I do drums, I start by just picking a random sound in my free thing. I think I got this, I can't remember how. So I've got a kick, I got this one for free. It's a little punchy, it's a little too present, but we'll fix that shortly. And then I got a snare. So I just made like a simple kick snare pattern. But that feels like, well, it feels like the iCarly theme song but that's a separate deal that's too boring you know what i mean and it doesn't really fit like a dragon boss it doesn't make you like bop your head it's too it's too like regular so what i decided to do was give it this kind of like funk type rhythm they all kind of have this kick snare pattern that i think is a lot more catchy and easier to bop your head to so already I think that's a huge improvement. Now the main issue is these sound like doo-doo and don't fit with the 8-bitty sounds at all. 
You hear that? That doesn't fit. That doesn't fit at all. We're going to use the key crush. <laughs> crush is the freaking holy grail through this whole thing. Well, the first thing I did was I added an EQ just to get it was too punchy. So to make it not sound like and sound more like like it's, it's a lot more easier to kind of palette now. Are you ready for this glow up? This OK, this looks a lot more scientific than it actually was. I just messed with these three dials until I liked how it sounded. So it goes from this to this. What a freaking cool kick. That is such a cool kick. I love that sound. That like really lo-fi kick sound. And I did the same thing with the snare. So instead of, I added an EQ to make it a little more mellow. I think y'all are kind of getting the pattern here. And then bit crushing. Listen to that, dude. This this thing is like a cheat code for making like video game music, in my opinion, because you don't even need to know what you're doing. You can just screw around so you're like, that sounds fire. So now we have this for our drums. Amazing. So now with the whole project, the bass comes in. And there it is. And this is gonna be the intro portion of our song right here. Just gonna stick with that. I just want the listener to start to get familiar with the rhythm and get grounded in a key. And then we're gonna throw them into the deep end with a, with a note switch that leads into our next section. So it's been A this whole time, and now we're gonna drop it an octave. Right there, to like be like, uh oh, it's coming. And then we get into the the real bass line of our song. Boom, boom, boom. And that's our bass line for the rest of our song. It's really simple. I wanna keep it super simple because that's the aspect of Stardew Valley music that sticks out most to me. It never like tries to push the bill of like really experimental musical theory. It's usually really simple chord progressions just done really well with a catchy melody. And and that's kind of what I went for with this one instead of trying to get experimental. And then I just added this um, a little stutter snare to kind of lead into the next section. Right there. I use this all the freaking time. I'm like the least creative person in the world. And then I just added the same like EQ thing I did at the beginning to make it kind of swell in a little bit. Right there. And then the last thing I added for the intro part was this like riser bit that just goes like this. I use those all the time too. And that leads into our first real big section. And let's talk about real big boy. Whoop, I, I, oops. So let's revisit the drums really quick. So this is what we're working with so far. That's, I, it needs it needs some more action, right? So I added two different kinds of hi-hats. First one is this one. I really like this one. This is This one is a little less present in the actual song. It gets kind of drowned up with the other hat, but I think it adds like a really fun, and this is just a hi-hat that I absolutely destroyed with more bit crushing. So it sounds like this without it. That's it. And then over here, I used the same hi-hat sound, but a different kind of bit crushing. I, I moved the wheels in a different way to make it sound like this, to make it sound more like a real hi-hat. So then all together, this is what we're working with. I love it. I think it's so catchy. I'm really a fan of this drum line. It's like really simple, but it makes you kind of like pop your head a little bit. So now we're working with this. And it's clearly missing a lot. And the main thing it's missing is some chords. So this is actually the first pattern that I made in this project. For the sound, I just flex. Okay, this this plugin right here, flex. It is free. It comes with FL Studio. If you download all the extra free stuff, it like takes some time and takes up a little bit of storage. But look at how many different sounds you get. And there are all these packs. Dude, flex is like a, is unbelievable. I used flex for probably like 90% of the so sounds in this song because it's free and amazing. That being said, spinneret is what I used for this one. And it sounds like this. It kind of like, I wanted it to almost sound like the direct midpoint between a synth and a pad. And that and that left me with this kind of sound, which I think is good. This, uh, the starting point I always go with is just lay down the simple chord of, of the bass notes. So the bass notes are an F, a G, and an A. So I just started with this. And that's super boring. Like no one's gonna hear that and be like, whoa. Cause that's like, this has been done a million times. It's just a simple like triad. We need to spice it up. So let's add some seven notes. So we have one, three, five, and then back up to eight, right? This F is the eight. So that's too boring. So let's lower this a note and make this 
That see, that's like a way more interesting chord. Though it is a little cramped. And whenever a chord is cramped, the note I usually get rid of first is the three. So now it sounds like this. Except on the second one, we're actually gonna do the full octave just because I think it sounds better. That this is the thing. I don't really use like musical theory when I make this kind of stuff. I usually just like mess around until I'm like, that sounds good, I think. And now let's get our last one. And let's do the same thing as this before we, we use that octave. There we go. There are our first three chords. So now we have our, th our chords, and if we just repeat those, then we get this. That's boring. It sounds depressing. It almost sounds like a funeral march. And, and like, we need, we need to bring some more energy. And the first way we can do this is by putting a little transition chord here in between this and the repeat, because otherwise it's so obvious that you just copy pasted it over. And this one, we're going to make it the same way we made these other chords, which is just one note, five note, and the eight note. So now it sounds like this chord, 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 chord. And there are your chords. But they're still not like interesting enough. Let's add an extra note to these last couple chords to really bring it home. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put that three back in there, this, this B, and we're gonna just throw that boy upstairs and that's gonna make it sound way better. We're gonna do the same thing over here. So these are the same kind of feel. However, this is something that I, that I, like a tip that I found that I think is really helpful whenever I try to make chord progressions. And that is that if your chord progression feels boring, try flipping like try first making the thing that's most predictable and then flip it from major to minor or minor to major. And it usually makes a huge difference. So usually when you hear these chords stepping up, you expect like a minor, like this. Technically this isn't a major or a minor because they're missing that three, but your brain kind of imagines that it's minor. More normal to put that minor in there and make it like this. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make the first one minor, but then go major on like the second time. So it like brings some variety and surprise. So it's like boom, like this. And then I want this to be major. And the way we do that is just by going boink. So then it, it goes. And I really like that chord progression. So now put it all together and it sounds like this. There you go, there's my first chord progression. And then the only other thing I wanted to add to this first part is that the bass presence felt a little lacking because this wasn't really powerful enough. So I added this, it's just like a, a strummed bass. Same bass line, same things, just adding a little more rhythm to the bass and a little more presence, so it sounds like this. If you're listening to this video on a phone, you probably can't hear very well, but if you're on like, a computer with headphones, it'll be a lot easier to tell. I wanted the second time for this chord progression to be different, so I, I kind of modified it. So the first thing I did to make it different was I just added this these like three notes that I did at the end of last time, but this time we're keeping this minor because I want it to be minor the first time and major the second time. But the last thing I wanted to do, sometimes it can be really like fun and sound cool to add kind of like a little internal melody to your um, chords besides just what the main lead is gonna be. And before you ask like, how did you do it? The answer is I clicked around until I got frustrated and said, this is good enough. I really just kind of felt it out and this is the best I could come up with. Then we're gonna hit these high notes like holy frick. Oh, hit them. So now our little internal melody goes like this. That's it. So that makes our chords sound like this. I would call that a glow up. I don't know about you. And then we're gonna lead into our next section right there. And really quick, you can probably hear, I did some fun little drum rearrangement up here to make like a cool little breakdown section. Bop, 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 bop. I think it sounds dope. And then I add another riser, which you can also probably hear. So yeah, now this drop at the beginning is a little more impressive. there. Very fun. So now we're going to need to introduce a couple more things here. And I have a couple ideas. First thing that's missing. Some of you who know like music and how it works might be thinking, where's the melody? It's right here. <laughs> it's coming up. Let's get to it right now. Here it is.
that's it so you want melodies to be really simple and like catchy and singable is a good word i like to use so i i like it's an easy trap to fall into to make your melodies too complicated because like you keep hearing something and you think like this could probably be improved maybe i should add some more stuff to the melody but a lot of times it'll get way too overwhelming and then be like not singable that being said this video is kind of more of like a check out this cute thing i made than a, like a tutorial so i'm not really qualified to be like here's how you make melodies making melodies is the hardest part but yeah and then i just added these kind of extra notes in the bass to really establish what our baseline is. So now with the whole song, it sounds like this. And another fun side effect of it is that the, the internal melody from the chords and the actual melody kind of harmonize here, if you can hear that. Right here. Baba versus Baba. And they harmonize. I don't, I like, I probably just sang those both really off key. So I'm going to have to go back and see if I harmonize with myself. Probably not. It still feels a little like empty compared to, it's it's not empty. There's a lot going on. But like right now it feels like we had this whole build up just to add one small melody. So it needs more. And that's why we have little old pattern eight down here. The last pattern that we haven't covered in this section. And all this stuff that I didn't cover, this is just like auto random automation stuff that more applies to this section over here. It, I just left it all over here because I'm scared it'll break something if I delete it. This is even more evidence that I am not an expert. Let's talk about this little baby boy right here. So this is what it sounds like. However, this isn't the sound I used for it. I just used this to demonstrate it to you because the sound I used is the key. So fun fact about this, this is actually the second pattern I made in this whole project and it was meant to be like a bass line. It was meant to be like strummed by a bass as you can probably tell by how those notes are arranged. That was intended to be like a bass guitar. Uh, but when I was clicking around looking for a bass guitar, I, I, was, I accidentally clicked on chip chirping, which sounds like this. And I was like, oh, I love that sound. Like, that sounds very video gamey. And I was like, what does it sound like if I put on my bass line just for haha -ha jokes? And I loved it. 95% of making music is accidents. So now, look, look at what this adds to the whole thing. It's subtle, but it really fills it out. Because, like, listen to this. And then feel how empty it feels without it now. I love it. I love it. So that's our that's our whole A section complete. We're over halfway through the song, guys. Look at look at look at us go. And then to lead into this B section right here, I just like cut everything out and made this tiny drum breakdown part. Right there. Section B. We got new chords, we got a new melody, and then I, I just added another crash and more like white noise. Right there to kind of like ease into it. So let me just play for you really quick what our new what our little B section is. Just a cute little song. And then that's building up to something right there, which we'll get to in a bit. Oh, cliffhanger. Also, this is this is off topic, but doesn't this sound like a like a plants vs. zombies type chord progression? Especially this part. That kind of feels like plants vs. zombies. I don't know why, but it does. So now this this section feels empty, doesn't it? It feels it's it's like so weird to tra to transition from like absolutely wild to this it's really empty so i added back in this part and then it still feels like there's not a lot of presence so i added this really like thick pad sounds like someone straight died rest in peace so now as a whole it sounds like this And then, and then right here, I wanted to bring in some more stuff to like change it up the second second way through. So I added the bass back in. Just to kind of like signify like, hey, we're on our way back to the, the, the real deal. Just so y'all know. Real shit approaching. And then I wanted to bring in some drums, but I didn't want the full kick and snare. 
So I added this effect down here to make the snare kind of like start muffled. And then as we get closer and closer to the drop, it's like, uh-oh, uh-oh. And now the snare is back. And then for the kick, I used just my little like this sound instead of like an actual kick drum because I thought it would be less present. So now we have this and it's gonna lead up. Oops, God damn it, God damn it. And then this big white noise right there as well as a couple snares to really accentuate these chords because what it's gonna do is it's gonna go and then lead right back into it. And I and I add I kept this this like new instrument from the B section to like accompany our main melody so it sounds like this. I love that part. I think it's neat as frick. So now we just lead back into basically an identical section as was back here, except we added a few things. First thing we added was, as I've already said now, this little square melody from before is now over here. And as you could probably tell when I played that, I added some extra notes to this melody section. So it used to be just this. Is now this. See that? There's some more stuff going on now. So now it sounds like this. And then I added one key component to really make this last part feel epic. And that is a shitty fake chorus. So I, I, when I was making this, I wanted to have like a chorus sound. You know what I mean? The only one FL Studio has sounds like this. If that ain't the fakest shit I've ever heard. However, this is the crucial last bit. If you play it with everything, it drowns it out so hard that it almost sounds real. So let's listen to it all together. See, like it, it kind of like sounds real. Almost. So that's, I love this last section. It's like super epic and fun. And it, it's like, it feels epic, but it doesn't feel like horribly hopeless because you have this major chord here at the end to kind of be a little uplifting bit. It makes it sound less like treacherous and more epic and triumphant. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it. And then here at the end, I like, I wanted to make this a short loop because people are not going to be fighting this boss for that long. It's a freaking Stardew Valley mod and they're going to kill this thing in like 20 seconds. So I figure I want it to be a quick loop. After this fun little, like our, I don't know, is that an our? Maybe after this fun little da -la -la, it, it's gonna it's this riser is gonna send us back into kind of like a state of calm where we just stick to these three Just take us home and then loop so now this loop sounds like this There it is, and I think it's a nice little loop. It's like, it loops cleanly without it being hard to tell when it loops because it clearly looped. And that's it, that's the whole song. We made it through the whole song, guys. So that's how I made it. I'm gonna play it one more time all the way through at the end of this video, and I'm also gonna upload it separately as its own video to my channel, just the song. So y'all can like listen to it whenever you want. Or if you wanna listen to it, you can play the mod. I'll have the link to the mod in the description of the video where you can go download it. Right when this video comes out, they're gonna release a patch that adds my song to the game. I'm so excited. So you can go play for yourself. And if you can somehow get to the fourth boss, which I've only done one time, you'll be able to hear my song. Very exciting. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it all the way here, I really truly appreciate it. I've always wanted to make more music content on the channel and I've always been too scared to. So your support really means a lot to me. Thank you for giving this video a chance and checking it out. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I will see you in a few days. Goodbye.